certified by the state as uh, driving instructors. So um, it's currently work at um, an inpatient or yeah, inpatient rehab hospital called Mary and Joy. We have um, over 30, 30 years of experience in our, the history goes back about 30 years. Um, we're probably the biggest um, uh, driver rehab program in the, in the Midwest. And we have over 80 years of experience uh, between the five uh, therapists. Um, so um, it's gonna kind of go through kind of the evaluation process a little bit, and then um, kind of get into some pretty high tech um, adaptations and then just some kind of simple stuff too. Um, so if um, the, the teen or new driver, doesn't have to be a teen, were to have an evaluation uh, through a, a rehab hospital or a driving program such as ours, we would first gather a history interview with the parent, guardian, and the student, um, just kind of see any, you know, any driving experience, any, any experience moving through space, which I'll kind of get into, whether it be horseback riding, go-karting, riding a bike, all those things that are, are really important to that pre-driving, uh, to the pre-driving aspect. Um, also want to assess their vision, make sure they meet the state requirements. All states are different. So I know Illinois, but if we have any um, questions about you know, exact states, I can look that up for you and get back to you. And also look at their cognition and then their, their motor uh, control as well. Um, part of that interview, we're gonna look at motor development, also management of, of the self, right? So it's, it's so much more than just driving, it's can they be home alone, right? Sometimes we get these evals that the, they come in and uh, is your child al allowed to be home alone for more than an hour? And like, oh no, we never. And it's like, well, why the heck would you think they're ready to, to drive a vehicle, right? So just kind of letting them, letting them know that there's so much more they can be doing besides you know, just working on driving skills. Uh, management of self in the community, which I'll get to as well. Um, readiness for driving, kind of all go hand in hand. Um, so management of self, right? So are they, are they able to do laundry? Are they bathing and showering without reminders? Just little stuff like that, that can really lead us to, uh, or kind of just add to that, that eval and see uh, if, if they truly are ready to, to start the process. Um, so here we go, you know, student left home alone without parental supervision. Can they do the following independently? Cross streets, go through crowded parking lots, um, walk or ride to a friend's house. Are they allowed to be at the mall pre-COVID, I guess? Um, plan or manage their time or homework. Just again, all these little things that um, definitely add up or can indicate if they're ready to, to start driving. So some of the life skills that are clinically proven to, or I guess not proven, but highly correlate with successful driving um, kitchen. So whether they're a new driver or maybe someone else come in to see if they should still be driving, our, our question is, or one of our kind of famous statements is, if they can't drive a stove, they probably shouldn't be driving a car, right? Um, if they can't you know, handle the multitasking and the planning of that, um, driving is gonna be pretty, pretty tough. Um, so there's also something kind of cool and, and I like kind of just going, relating it back to camp is, you know, just kind of those activities that we've done, the cooking activities and, and things like that. Um, pretty interesting to kind of plant that seed, even if they're not even, you know, close to driving, but just get them more comfortable and work on those skills way before that even uh, think about getting behind the wheel. Um, other life skills, family responsibilities. So help taking care of siblings or pets, planning, that, planning activities with friends and family or just obeying the family rules. Um, home responsibilities, so just minor repairs or, or chores, right? Taking out the trash, recyclables. Do they have to be reminded that it's garbage night? Taking the, the trash out. Um, simple errands in the neighborhood. Um, laundry is actually a really big one because it's just the timing and the planning issue, right? So um, are, are they just they need reminders? Hey, you're almost out of underwear, right? Do the laundry. Um, how, how much soap are they putting in? Uh, do they remember that it's done drying and things are going to get wrinkled? Um, so just, again, these life skills that, that we can kind of use to, to gauge uh, their readiness, uh, safety and emergencies. Again, just going back to that home alone uh, for several hours at a time, knowing emergency phone numbers, um, can follow emergency procedures um, in case there was a fire or something going on in the home. Um, community skills. So just kind of navigating as a pedestrian, riding a bike or scooter. Um, my next presentation, I will have someone from camp on a bike in this presentation. Uh, a little bit last minute, uh, but I think that really helped me out. Um, so just again, just that moving through space, right? So a lot of our kids, um, 
limb different or not, or you know, people that we see, um, they're not getting that so much as a as a person without a limb difference, right? Limb, limb, yeah, limb difference. Um, so, and I know when I was a kid, right, things were a little bit different. I think you can all say that. But you know, riding your bike, uh, riding my bike, I had my car, and we I still rode rode my bike around the neighborhood, and just dealing with traffic and, and making those decisions, um, crossing busy streets and managing complex intersections, uh, following direction, directions or using a map, even if it's you know using their phone, um, Google Maps or whatever, that uh, that can all help or be an indicator that they are ready to pursue driving. Um, healthcare skills, so understanding their personal health status and diagnosis, um, knowing their medications if they're on any um, knowing the importance of those medications. So, right, so we might have a limb different, difference, but we might also have ADHD. Are we remembering to take that, those medications? Um, do we know, you know what, what can happen if we're not on, on our medications? Sometimes we'll get a, a teen that, you know, they, they kind of take a medication break during the summer. And um, so it's like, well, okay, maybe we don't want to do that if we're going to be driving because that's definitely going to impact um, what, what, how, how successful that's going to be. Or kind of knowing, you know, when those side effects might kick in, or when that medication will wear off uh, throughout the day, or just simply asking for help uh, when facing difficulties. Uh, time management, again, super important. Um, getting to class on time, waking up for school or work, um, just again that kind of higher level thinking that can uh, that's just just super important in life and and definitely with with driving. Um, so a lot of this you know, kind of goes back just to that the frontal lobe. So. Um, still maturing until our early 20s. Uh, research suggests that uh, for females, it can continue to develop um, until about 21, for males, almost to 25. So um, it's kind of understanding how that can impact uh, just the executive function, right? So those um, kind of split decisions, those um, working memory, impulse control, uh, so super important to, to driving course. And um, so we kind of bring this up. So we might get a 15, 16 year old in there that's just not ready. And um, just telling them, hey, their brain is gonna continue to develop. It, it's okay to wait. Here are some, some things you can work on. Um, and it can make a, make a pretty big difference, which we'll get into some of the pre-driving skills that um, a lot of these guys can, can start right now. Um, so just anticipating uh, potential danger, other drivers, the environment, uh, vehicle, and then controlling that emotional response, right? So they're probably gonna be nervous already. Um, if, if they've got a ways to go, then it's, it's gonna make it that much difficult, more difficult. So uh, another big um, role of the frontal lobe is overseeing problem solving and decision-making. So just being able to adjust to dynamic driving situations um, it might not be raining when they start and all of a sudden it, it's raining cats and dogs and they're going to have to make a decision to either safely pull over or, you know, um, kind of keep calm, turn the wipers on, make sure the headlights are on. And it also controls um, the memory of habits, muscles and body movements. So um, that muscle memory and just kind of getting into the more physical and motor aspects of driving. So it's, it's much more than the, the motor aspects, but um, the if the frontal lobe is not developed, that's going to be even harder. So just, and also the sequencing of maneuvers. So remembering, you know, what it, what it takes to parallel park or um, kind of do our, our three point turns. So this is um, really helpful. I think, again, just for, for those kiddos where we're just not sure if they will get behind the wheel, but we can start um, kind of working on these skills immediately without having to contact someone like me or any therapist. Um, so like I kind of mentioned before, um, getting them moving through space. So that's why, you know, camp, just getting them on bikes and, and getting them moving uh, is going to be just super, super important. Um, just that development and, and body control and, and controlling something, you know, outside of your body, um, such as the bike, but also scooters, horseback riding, go-karts, lawnmowers, um, more time uh, behind, the, behind any wheel or anything moving is going to be beneficial. Um, so going to get a little more, more detail here. So limb differences are alone are definitely not a reason to rule out the pursuit of driving. You may need to wait, um, until they're a little bit older, maybe not. Um, as I'm sure a couple of our mentors can, can elaborate on, you know, they started driving at 
15, 16, and some of you got some campers out there with their permits. So it's awesome to hear. Um, so kind of the pre-driving stuff. So this exercise, um, it's called being an active passenger. So it allows the, the driver um, to eventually see, or the driver, yeah, so the parent or guardian or teacher to see where the student um, is attending. So are they looking uh, down the road far enough? Are they keeping their eyes moving, scanning, and not just fixating on one thing? So we have to remember, and we, it's probably hard to remember for most of us, um, but first time we got behind the wheel, right? Or, or even, okay, scratch that. So when we get behind the wheel, we drive now, we're gonna go to the target. Um, I'm not even gonna realize exactly or how, how many decisions I need to make or what I'm focusing on, right? If, I, if I'm only focusing on the car in front of me, I'm not gonna pay attention to the lights. I'm not gonna pay attention to what's behind me, what's next to me. Our eyes are constantly moving. We're, we're attending to so many different things at once quickly too. Um, so this is, a, this is a cool way to, to kind of help them with that uh, before they're even behind the wheel. So what, what's gonna happen is that they're gonna sit in the passenger seat while you are driving, hopefully. Um, and they're just gonna start kind of talking about what they're seeing, what they're focusing on. So we're hoping to um, help them prioritize the potential hazards. Um, so what this will do is increase the awareness of the driving environment. Again, let the parent know what the teen is attending to in the driving environment. Um, you start off really simple. So uh, first lesson would be, hey, every time we see a stop sign, you're gonna tell me as soon as you see that stop sign and maybe kind of tell me when you think we should start slowing down. Um, and then you kind of you add a little bit to that. So then you say, okay, besides that, I want you to tell me when I should, be, I should uh, activate my turn signal. And we usually say about three houses, right? If we're gonna be making a turn, um, you know, or uh, with, the, with the lane change, obviously before you even, um, into that other lane. And then you kind of get into those potential hazards too. So then you add one more. So then you say, okay, do you see anyone that's gonna kind of maybe unexpectedly pull into our lane? I want you to tell me before they do that. Um, so, and then this is really nice too for parents, um, for Sarah especially, I want you to hopefully try this and maybe get back to me because when he is starting to drive, excuse me, when, when he's kind of able to think out loud, then you're gonna be a lot more comfortable because so you have, you have Sean driving and you see this big, pick, uh, big garbage truck ready to pull out. You know he's gonna go because he's assuming that, he's gonna, that you can see him. But what's gonna be nice is that Sean will say, hey, I see that garbage truck. Don't worry about it, I'm already on the brake. Um, so that if, if we can do that before they're even driving and then they get to be driving and they're talking like, you know, um, it's gonna make the parent just feel a lot more calm. Um, this is perfect, Brandon. Brandon. Yeah, thank you. It, <laughs> I love this. Because we don't know what they're thinking, right? And, and we know what we're thinking. We know what we see. Um, so it's, it's, it's really nice because we can just kind of see that continuum or we're planting that seed. It's actually interesting. In Canada, part of their driving test, they, they have them kind of think out loud, um, no matter you know, if it's a teen or, or they're assessing you know, grandma or, or someone else. So it's just kind of neat to, uh, to, to see. And then we can also improve concentration. Um, so they say that vision accounts for 90 to 95 percent of the driving inputs. Um, so we want to make sure you know far and near acuity is there, binocular vision, peripheral vision, and then uh, vis visual motor skill tracking. Um, so there's much more to the to the visual system than just acuity, just being able to see. So we need to process in this information, process it quickly, and then act on it. So we're hoping by being a, an active passenger um, that it can help with that. So I know you guys, some of you are in Florida, that is snow. It's gonna cover some, some lane markings, right? They pull up um, to this and they've gotta, you know, if they're gonna go straight, they better be in that middle lane. Um, and if they're gonna be in the right or turn, trying to turn right, they better be in that right lane. Um, so just being able to quickly process that and figure out where they need to be and then signaling and, and getting over there safely. Um, so again, we just we we can get that that visual system going um, as early as possible. It, it should make for a, a little bit easier um, time when when they are learning to drive. Um, this one uh, always surprises people. So for every one mile driven, there are over twenty decisions that need to be made in less than half a second to react. So um, next time you drive somewhere, preferably an unfamiliar place. 
Try to think about all the decisions that you need to make. What color is the light? Is it gonna change? Is the person next to you with the turn signal on really gonna change lanes or has it been on for the last half mile? Um, you're also trying to look uh, for pedestrians, bicyclists. Um, David, I can only imagine driving where you live, man. Um, and then trying to find the street name, you know, all without Google Maps, right? So it's like, oh my gosh. So again, try to get these, these kids processing information as quickly as we can. With, without any risk, right? They're just sitting in the passenger seat. Um, so probably should have started with this, but so right front passenger seat is best. Um, eyes <clears throat> about three inches line of sight above the, the steering wheel. Um, so I mean, well, yeah, so they can, they can see. So, so maybe some of our, our kids are just a little bit shorter. So you may be putting them on a cushion because we never really cared about um, them seeing out of the, the car before, right? So we need to make sure that they can see when we're doing this. And then you also wanna check the side view. So they're not looking at the B pillar. So the B pillar is typically um, where the uh, seat belt is attached, where it comes out. So you wanna make sure that that seat isn't so far back that they can't see out that side window um, to see you know, kind of the blind spot or who's next to them. Um, so that is being an active passenger. One of the best things we can do, we might get a kid that's super not appropriate and we say, hey, come back in like two years would say, but, but do this, right? Because it can't hurt. It's gonna only uh, hopefully improve that, the processing. Um, in electronic, kind of the easy version, um, especially if it's bad weather or you just don't have time to, to get out, it's called Drive Focus. It's now available on um, Android as well as Apple. For a while, it was just Apple. Um, last time I checked, it was a one-time fee. So there's no microtransactions or a subscription. I think they tried a subscription for a little while, um, but not sure of the price, I, I can look and get back to you. But um, interestingly, it was designed by researchers in the driver rehab world. So I believe they're occupational therapists um, with some money from, um, for research. And they designed this uh, because of how successful at being an active passenger is. Um, so this is kind of the electronic version. So I've got a video on the next page. It's, it is from their website. Um, I don't get anything from them. If I did, I, I, uh, it'd be great because I have recommended it quite a few times here. So, uh, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna start it yet. But it, the the view uh, on the on the tablet. So it's it's only tablet. It's 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 not available on the phone. It's you want a, a bigger screen anyway. So it's gonna be a waste of money. Um, but you download onto a tablet, and it's pretty much the camera is facing like through the front windshield, right? So they're they're looking at the front windshield. The object is that they're gonna just tap on the screen the things that they should be attending to and then the things that are most important. It's pretty cool. Um, you can slow it down. You can kind of go at regular speed. There's drives all over the world actually, um, US, Canada, I believe some other countries as well. Um, so I'll hit play here and we'll see what happens. Oh no, I won't. Gosh, there we go. Hey, Brandon, Brandon you you're on your earphone, so I don't think we can hear that. Oh, crap. Okay. Um, okay. So you can kind of see, though, um, he's just going to touch the screen. Uh, I'll kind of just repeat. Brandon, if you take your earphone, if you just unplug your earphone, then we'll be able to hear it. Maybe turn the volume up, maybe, I don't know. Or maybe not. It may just be a source thing. eventually hello hello oh we can hear you now okay good. did you eventually hear him talking no no sure. we okay. couldn't hear him talking but you could see what he was doing okay so yeah i mean yeah so he was just saying how you're going to prioritize 
um, your score is going to get better. You know, you can you can kind of turn down the the speed, and then you kind of earn new drives. Um, so it's super simple. Again, so it, it's really kind of the active passenger. This the e version. Um, it, it's uh, we we love it, um, and uh, yeah, can't say enough about it. So um, we'll get into adaptations and vehicle modification. I've got some pretty cool pictures, um, some nice videos that I'm hoping um, we can get the, the sound to work. But these are just uh, come some of the um, just modifications we can do to, to make things easier for, for a person with a limb difference. Um, and a lot of, uh, I know our, our campers and mentors don't need any of this and, and that's great. I just wanna make sure that um, these parents know what's out there. And, and um, I mean, we're all about body mechanics and, and safety. I mean, even something simple as you know, disabling the, the airbag, right? So I'm just thinking of a couple of our mentors um, with kind of shorter limbs. Uh, you think, you know, getting so close to that, that front airbag, um, if, if that goes off, that's gonna, that's gonna lead to a, probably a pretty, pretty bad situation. So. Um, spinner knob with or without set, uh, integrated secondary. So what that means is a spinner knob or um, kind of a steering device on the, on the steering wheel. And we can also put in turn signals on that thing. We can put uh, the wipers on it, um, the, the high beams, so that they never have to take that hand um, off, off that spinner knob. We could also put a, a ring for use with a prosthetic hook, um, turn signal crossover. So what they would do is put the um, turn signal on the other side of the steering wheel so that um, you don't have to reach, reach across depending on, on which side the limb difference is on. Um, a modified shifter, right? So some of these newer, newer vehicles have um, like a rotary shifter. It looks like a volume knob. So that's, that's really great for someone that might not be able to hit the button and pull or push that, that shifting lever. Um, we can do remote access to the secondary. So the secondaries are gonna be Again, those signals, the wipers, anything we have to do while the vehicle is in motion that is not gas, brake, or steering. Um, we can also, like I mentioned, disable the airbag, uh, smaller or extended steering wheel, which we'll see with a very special guest um, starring in that, that picture. Uh, it could be something, something as simple as modifying um, some wheelchair cushions or padding added to the original driver's seat just to get them a little bit higher or give them a little bit of support where they need it. Um, it's amazing what they can do. We've got a shop near us, which I'm sure is not, um, I'm sure there hopefully others are out there. Um, if you looked at it, I mean, it, it looks just like the original seat, but it's got a little bit more padding here and there. So it's these, uh, these shops are really available, uh, really amazing what they can do. Or it's something simple as just modifying um, a button or a switch or putting, you know, um, like a strap on a door, which we'll see which you know, doesn't cost a lot of money, but it can really make a big difference for body mechanics and, and just ease and, and uh, access. Um, so then some of the more high tech stuff, we can do reduced um, or zero effort steering if they don't have enough strength. We can do uh, gas brake hand controls, either electric, uh, we can put them on, or, or mechanical, put them on the right or the left. Um, left foot accelerator, again, mechanical or electronic. We got some pretty pretty neat left foot accelerators out there right now. Uh, one uh, one issue that they've had is that some of these bigger shops weren't installing these things because of the liability. So it's not it, it, if you have one, you you you're very likely had training. And um, the hardest thing is for people that originally learned to drive the traditional way. So gas on the right, brake on the left. And uh, it, it's really hard to turn that off, if you will. So in those old crap situations, we call them, where you have to slam on the brake, all of a sudden they're going to the left, you know, to brake like they've done for 20 years. But now that is, um, the, the gas is on the left. So they're gonna floor it instead of slamming on the brake. These equipment uh, modifiers, are, or yeah, these vehicle modifiers didn't wanna be held uh, liable for that. So they weren't installing them. So you'd have to maybe you know order it online and, and try to find someone that would install it for you and just kind of hope for the best. Uh, or maybe a smaller mom and pa shop that needed the business, they would install it. Thankfully, um, with technology and these uh, 
yeah, the, the technology of these cars and things are more are, are electronic now, kind of plug and play. Um, they're electronic. So they, they mount this, this pedal down there. And when you start the car, you have to press a button. So you're opting in. So um, it, it's on the driver that, that they, uh, they're, they're, they're opting in. So with that, the, <clears throat> these, these bigger guys are, are installing these things. And the other issue was, you know, you go to get your oil changed or, or detailed and uh, you've got a 16 or 18 year old kid in there that, oh, wow, what's this down here? I don't know. Looks, looks pretty cool. Let's try it out. All of a sudden they're putting the car through a wall or pinning someone up against the wall because they've never, never driven with these things either. So um, with the electronic, it's, it's kind of nice that people are more easily able to, to get these installed um, just because of liability. And then lastly, probably the most complex and Unfortunately, most expensive are our lower floor minivans or SUVs. Often, these are our power wheelchair users. Not always, though. Um, could be a manual wheelchair or just someone that, um, that you know, has trouble getting into a, a traditional vehicle. We can do you know, anything, any of the things I mentioned before, but we can also do electronic high-tech hand controls, which you'll see a really cool video where this um, girl doesn't even touch the steering wheel. She's got... Um, a joystick and, and nothing is in contact with the pedals either. So she's got um, kind of a uh, hand control on, on the other side that's it's all electronic and it, it's moving um, the steering wheel just kind of remotely. It's, it's really neat. And then even remote secondaries with a head switch. So um, they might kind of tilt their head a little bit and they hold it down and uh, they can do the signals, the wipers, the high beams, the windows even um, without you know touching the actual actual buttons of the, the vehicle. We've got some pictures of clients that my partners have seen throughout the years. Uh, this girl is um, congenital, doesn't have arms, and she does everything with her feet, as we've seen some campers definitely do. Um, so my guess is that that airbag is turned off, um, and she, uh, she was independent. I think they, they probably worked on positioning a little bit, make sure that she can see, you know, um, just really neat to imagine. Um, just another another view there, how flexible she is. This one, um, kind of a, a little bit shorter residual limb there. Um, and this was actually the gas brake. So they would um, kind of lift, lift the leg up uh, for, for gas and then kind of push in for brake. Um, and then, you know, the steering would be traditional. Uh, this guy had um, a ring on the, on the right side and on the left, he's controlling the gas and the brake. And then this, uh, a different, uh, different person, they um, customize like a little cuff to, um, to attach to the hand control. So that's gonna do the gas brake with their right arm and their left arm, they're gonna steer and do everything else. Um, so just kind of creating more surface area and just really getting it nice and snug in there so it wouldn't slide out. Okay, um, I'm gonna really try to do the audio here. So I'm gonna unplug my mic.
you have to explain it first. Um, and here on the right, I have my steering. It's very similar to the steering that I have with my wheel today, so that's why we decided to go with it. Um, so my arm stays right here, and then I just turn it this way, and you can see the steering wheel move, and you turn it this way. So I can adjust how sharp of a turn I want to do, or um, how slow of a turn. Um, and then this little guy right here is my horn, so I'll just go into my airboat and then just have to do it from the airboat. <laughs> and I got it um, so I can reach things. It's lightweight. Um, it's one of those carbon arrows, so it's lightweight, but it's also durable, so I can use it to hit things. So I can put here. Um, I can use it in my touch screen and also for my transition from here. The most difficult part of the process is probably uh, getting the van and setting the driver up because um, the adaptation to a van was just over $100,000. We started off um, with the Woodson United Access, and we picked out the van. Um, and we kind of just bought the van um, kind of at the basic level. And they took it, and they kind of started everything. And so when you're driving something that's over $100,000, Hello, hello. Yeah, we can hear you now. I didn't hear the last part, Brandon. I couldn't hear it really well because it was low, but. Um... Can you guys hear me? Oh. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us, Brandon? Yes, yes, I can. I... Did you get any audio on that? Yeah, it was a little low. It was low on my end, but what was the last part she was mentioning? Um, so she had the pad, she had the touch pad, and then there was the other side. Uh, yeah, she... so I can, I can kind of. Um... I just couldn't hear some of it at the end. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, so what's kind of neat is that she has a lockdown on the power chair. So she's going to pull into the same spot every time it locks down and it's not going to go anywhere. It's, they've been all crash tested. Um, it's pretty neat. To release the chair, she'll hit a, a button, and then she'll have a uh, certain amount of time to, to drive that, you know, off that platform until it locks again. Um, you guys can see my cursor? Yes, we can. Good. Okay. So this is going to be the gas brake. Um, she's going to push forward. Well, it, it can be different for anybody, um, but um, I think she was forward for gas and, and reverse uh, pulling back for brake. Um, and then the touch screen, she was saying that's that's going to be all of her. Um, some of her secondary is going to be um, AC windows. Yeah. So um, probably not something she's going to do on the move, but she can roll down her um, her window, passenger window. Um, this is how she's going to shift as well. So they're going to put this on the other side of the gas brake. So left side is going to break and then with her her right side she'll she'll activate this um, she can do wipers from here too but she's also going to do wipers um, I believe it was on her left side it might be a head switch so all she has to do is kind of lean into it uh, or it might be kind of a shoulder thing um, and then she was uh, then wouldn't have to touch this again while while she's moving because it's going to be pretty hard um, come on There we go, yeah. And then she was just kind of showing the wipers there. Uh, yes, yeah, so then you saw that she doesn't ever touch the steering wheel. Um, that does not mean that um, whoever, you know, else she might live with, uh, parent, guardian, spouse, um, couldn't drive this vehicle. Um, they would not have to use this. So 
they would have to, that yellow ball down there, um, that would kind of disengage the, the rest of this stuff. They'd slide, a, um, oh yeah, she has the driver's seat in there. So they would be able to drive traditionally, um, just kind of making sure not to, to hit the stuff that, not that it would it activate, but it would just might be a little bit in their way. Um, so that's always the question we get. Well, am I the only one that's gonna be able to drive this vehicle? No, others are gonna be able to. They're just gonna have to maybe kind of reach around some of the stuff that uh, they're not using. So, And then that arrow is pretty cool. Uh, my coworker is super creative, um, kind of those hard to reach uh, uh, buttons and, and switches. So she was saying it's a carbon, um, very, very strong and lightweight arrow uh, that we cut the, the tip off and then put um, some kind of rubberized grip on there. Um, so she uses that for the dome lights and I think like uh, opening up the, the rear hatch. Um, then she was just saying that uh, this whole thing, this whole van costs over $100,000. Um, so I will get into funding. Um, unfortunately, it, it, it is, it's a lot of time. So not only is it pretty neat technology, but as you can see, they, they ripped apart this whole van to, to put the electronics in. Um, so that's going to take time and, and money. Um, cool thing is with this uh, electronic stuff, they actually do it in Maine. Um, there's a company that, um, that we, we sh they ship all the vans out there. And they actually they do it there and then ship them back to, to wherever they're going to be. Um, so the, the hard thing is um, kind of waiting until you have funding. And then, you know, once you have this vehicle, insuring it because you're still insuring a $100,000 vehicle. So funding for this is usually state funded um, by the Department of Rehab Services. At least that's what it's called in, in Illinois. Um, each state should have something that, that's pretty similar. And what we tell our clients is um, the justification has to typically be that you, you need to drive in order to go to school or uh, traditionally work. So the states would, would rather fund this girl, you know, $100,000 or more plus training. Um, you have to buy the, the chassis of the van. So it could be $35,000, dollars $50,000, but then any adaptations the, the state uh, would pay. Um, they, would, they also paid for evaluation and training, most likely, um, which, which can add up. But they would rather do that uh, and, and have her pay taxes because she's working than um, be you know, at home on, on disability. So there is a good chance um, that these guys can get funded. It can take a while, but um, uh, we, can, we can help make that happen. So uh, you're going to recognize this next, next girl here. Um, Glad I got these pictures today and I knew she had some pretty cool equipment. So, um, Justin, do you wanna, can you talk a little bit about what's going on in this picture? Yes, so I have a small steering wheel. I think it's about 10 inches in diameter. Um, and as you can see, it's extended. Is that what you call it? Yeah, yeah. So you got uh, a little extension here, bring it closer to it. Yeah. And I also have the airbag taken out because like you mentioned earlier, it's safer not to have one. Um, I also have reduced effort steering. So I have an extra hydraulic pump into the built into the engine. So it just makes it to where I don't have to turn the wheel as much. And it's, it's uh, makes it a lot easier to turn the wheel too. Um, it's pretty much it with the steering. Okay. And then I've got your video coming up next. So. <laughs> so that's kind of you know just a simple strap but it allows her to be you know independent not not hurt her her arm um and, she, and she's good to go so that was um i'm just really happy to get these pictures today so thanks again Okay. Credit to the uh, to the videographer of that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see this till now. <laughs> yeah, and I love the color, right? Um, yeah, of course, it has to be purple. What what is that button there? The backup steering. Do you have to hit that every time, or is that just a, a backup? No. So if for some reason the um, reduced effort steering would stop working or something, that's okay. just a button I would press. Um, it. I think it said, they said it would give me like 20 minutes or something oh, wow. to uh, make sure I 
can get off the road before wow. that okay. actually uh, stops working, if that makes okay. sense. Okay, very cool, <laughs> very cool. Um, some interesting things have happened in the past couple of years with, with this reduced effort or, or zero effort steering um, because it, it is kind of hard to get used to. Um, if we look at her steering wheel, so we think about physics, right? So if, we're sh if, we're, um, if we just shrunk the wheel, that wheel is going to be harder um, to turn because we, we shrunk it down, right? So what they did was, you know, reduce her, her steering so that she can more easily um, have control of that vehicle. But if um, we can go, it, it's it just saying it's low effort or zero effort, do you know, just reduced? Um, mine is reduced effort, but okay. I know Excellent. it did So um, what, what's happened in the last couple of years is um, they can actually turn that off just with the uh, uh, with everything going with electronic, right? So Justine's is a little bit older, it's hydraulic. Nowadays, it's electronic. So they can just say, okay, you, um, and each, each vehicle is different, but if you want 50% reduction, they, they, it's, a, it's, it's honestly an Android phone that they plug in. It, it communicates, I think, either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and, and you can, they can manage, um, they can adjust it just on the fly. From a consumer standpoint, um, you, you can kind of turn that on and off um, you can't really adjust it, but let's say the caregiver wanted to drive it and, and it wasn't going to be zero effort because um, it, is, it is very touchy if, if, um, if you're able to, if you have um, the strength to, to drive it the traditional way. Um, so it, it's kind of neat that they, they can kind of dial that in nowadays and it's um, just with the technology, the advancements in, in these vehicles. Uh, so it's, everyone's kind of benefiting from that. So pretty cool to see. And again, thank you very much for sending those today. Um, funding. So high school. Um, hey, Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. Sorry. I also wanted to say that I had them put in an electric seat for the driver's seat. It wasn't like that before. Oh, okay. So I have to have the seat so close when I'm driving. It's impossible to get in and out of it when it's up that high. Okay. Um, so I have to have it to where I can put it back to. Okay. So that was that was also very helpful. Okay, so so it goes back a little bit farther than it, it would normally. Yeah. So if you go back to the picture of the door with the handle. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> yep. Uh, you can see kind of on the the left side of the handle. Yeah, those buttons. That's all to uh, um, for the seat. And that Very moves cool. forward, backwards, and then it, it also can move it up and down a little bit too. Wow. Very, very, very cool. Okay. And then I was going to um, just kind of looking at this cushion, right? So that's, it's a, just, you know, it's a little bit different shape, but probably not super expensive, but it, it puts her in a good position. And, yeah, and it works. I got that on oh. Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How much was it? Uh, 20. Maybe bucks, right. So, so without it, you're going to work extra hard, and your body mechanics going to be all off. Um, but with it, you know, you're able to drive for longer periods of time mm -hmm. and be a safer overall driver. So, um, I love it. I, I really, I uh, really gets me gets me going over here. So, uh, funding. So, um, I know at, at any time I've talked about this at, at uh, talked about talked about this at, at camps. Um, uh, we want the high schools to, to support support these, these campers as much as we can, um, either through an IEP um, or a 504 plan. They likely won't pay for adaptations, but sometimes, most of the time, at least in Illinois, evaluation and training, um, we, can, we can make the argument that it should be covered because the high schools cannot provide that specialized equipment or training often needed. Um, so uh, we just, you know, if that's their goal, you know, get it in there early and, and, and fight because it's, it's super important to have the right resources and it, it's, it's a dangerous thing. So it's, it's learning to drive is hard enough, uh, let alone with, with equipment or um, adaptation. So the other one is uh, at least Illinois, it's what we, they call it vocational rehab, uh, Department of uh, Human Services, the Office of Rehab. Um, so like I said, they're, they're focused on community mobility for work or school. Um, generally, age 18 or even after high school, sometimes after college, right? So 
if they're going to fork over, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars, um, they don't want to do that for a 15, 16 year old that, that doesn't need to need to drive at this moment. Um, again, varies by state. I can provide uh, additional information if, if needed for um, to, to look up a little bit closer to home. But um, a lot of times um, we'll, we'll be evaluate someone and say, you know what, you're not going to get covered. Uh, you're not going to get funding. Go focus on, on high school. Sometimes focus on, on, on after school as well, college or um, so, some other programs. And then uh, we'll, we'll kind of help you ask for funding again. And it's just because um, it, it's, it's, they want you to work. So, um, but it, it's worth it. I mean, they paid tens of thousands of dollars. And for us, uh, it's pretty much probably 90 or 95% of the people we see are, are state funded just because it can get so, so pricey. Um, and with that, I am about done. I would like to love to hear from some of our, our, our mentors that, that are on. Um, I'll stop sharing and see all your beautiful faces. Oh, there we go. Um, oh, Bella joined. Excellent. All right. Um, so yeah, any questions? I know I was flying, but a lot of information and I want to get it all out there. Oh, Sarah's here. Good. Love to hear what you have to say. Um, yeah. So Mary, I don't know if you want to take it away or who wants to talk first, but I'd love to hear what you guys are doing and any questions. Are you happy to answer? Well, maybe some of our mentors can talk about their experiences. I don't know. Um, talked a little bit. Uh, Bella, I don't know if you got to see that video earlier. Did you, do you have, because I know you've done some driver training. You yeah, do? so I did some um, training a few years ago and I had the car that had like the joystick okay i used that and then it had like the pad on the side too with all the different buttons you can press okay um it was really cool i got to like drive in like a parking lot it had i mean i have like an adaptable adaptable van right now and it kind of had that same thing where like the ram comes out sure, yeah. and you can lock in your chair um which is really cool because right now i have like the hooks and so that's like really not something that i can do by myself so yeah, it had the thing where your chair locks in and yeah, I had the joystick. Um, I mean, that was my first time driving like ever. So I think I kind of experienced the same stuff that like anybody would experience the whole like, oh, this is kind of scary. Oh, I don't know how to turn that great. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really cool. I kind of fell off the wagon with that one because I go to school in Boston, which has public transportation. Okay. So they didn't fund it for me, which I get. Um, so yeah, I haven't really addressed it again in a while, but eventually someday I will and hopefully get a van by that, you know, I can have. Excellent. Thanks, Bella. Um, Roy is above the knee so i was just uh i don't know roy if you have anything can you share your experience at all sorry penny's like noisy um you know what like i when when i knew like i when i you know started to knew that i could like drive that's when like i tried the go-kart <laughs> Uh, and then from there, like literally just, I was just thinking that of a go-kart, you know, like just switching from, from, uh, you know, from the stopping pedal to the gas pedal. Um, it was like, it was easy for me in that way. I just thought like about like a go-kart and, you know, driving a couple of times from the car, it helped. <laughs> but like, it's, it was easier for me to drive. But you didn't have any other adaptations or anything? That was it. No, <laughs> I don't. That's good. Uh, Sarah. Nothing. <laughs> you have something, right? Maybe you can just talk a little bit about that. I have, it's called a V-grip on the wheel. And it's like a spinning knob. It has the same base, but um, the grip in itself, it's for me, um, I um, I put my hand in it and it will rotate as I am steering. Um, and it's on a normal steering wheel. Um, I did actually 
learn how to drive with, I forget if it was a low resistance or no resistant wheel of a smaller wheel like Justine, but um, I um, tried with the V-grip on a regular wheel and was able to do it. So I stuck to that. Um, and other than that, the button to start the car is very helpful. They, I use my knee. Um, that's very much easier than turning uh, the key on. Um, and that's really it. And voice activated, that's in a lot of new cars. That's very helpful. But I'm very interested to know about that stick that was in the video, that um, the tip of the stick that you were, she was able to touch the screen um, because that uh, touch screen is so sensitive on, on what type of um, a tip it's being used. So oh, sure, yeah, I'll ask my coworker. Um, I know that it was an arrow, the shaft of an arrow. So it's oh. lightweight, but super strong. So it's a, it was a carbon fiber. Um, yeah, I would benefit from having one of those. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll, I can get back to you um, probably tonight. Thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll text her in a second. Yeah. No, thank you. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else that has any driving, anyone that had any, anything they want to talk about, like when they, even when they went to driver's ed, if they had any, anyone question them on anything or anything else to share. Well, I just have one. I mean, I don't, um, it's just been interesting. So in Massachusetts, um, the driving is not part of the education. So it was, um, it was an interesting adventure to figure out like what exactly we had to do because honestly, the, the RMV when I think over, I think when there was, we had our first shutdown in March, they actually updated their website because I had looked previous to that and I found no information. And then I looked after that in the summer and I found some information, but, um, but I think it was interesting because, you know, I finally figured out that he needed um, a medical evaluation note, or I just wanted to make sure that he had that. I didn't even know if he needed it. But as I was filling out, it wasn't even until we were filling out his permit application that then it said there was a question of like, is there any neurological, physical, or anything that may, you know, um, interfere with the ability to drive? And it clicked on that you could click on a link that then told you like sort of what a further explanation and it did not all it said talked about was self care like if he could not self care which to me I was like that makes no sense but I know that he should have it in there it's his right leg and he'll most likely be driving right foot on the gas left foot on the brake um, because it's a little bit heart he tried switching over and it, he was just more comfortable doing what you know and we were told that was legal that's safe and everything but it was just so interesting to me because on that i was like i could easily say no to this because he can do self-care but i know that if he ever got in an accident like he has to have it written on there that he needs his prosthetic to drive so it was just a weird thing and then with driver's ed for us um, i called three driver's ed schools we have a whole bunch of them around here um, one of them, or I email, I emailed them and one of them just was like, nope, we have no experience with that and wanted no further <laughs> interaction. And then two of them did say, oh no, that's no problem. Like we'll work it out that he would work with one specific driver, but that they'll work it out. So we'll see how that goes. But it was definitely, a, it was not straightforward as far as like really what we had to do. And I did end up talking to an adaptive driving instructor and he's the one that told me it was legal to, for him to drive using both feet. Um, and he was, you know, he was like, I can't, he said, I can do an evaluation, but I use it. You know, he's like, I don't think that he would need it. Um, but I, I wasn't confident that he was actually going to get his permit, like that they were going to clear him because I just was like, do I have all the right paperwork? I'm not really sure, <laughs> but it was totally fine. And even the woman at the RMV was like, do you mind if I, you know, block out his name and show my colleagues this? She's like, I've been working here 20 years and haven't had to input this information. <laughs> so it was, you know, it's just interesting that, I don't know. 
but that's I had a really similar experience with driver's ed of not knowing um what to do and in Maine um to to get your permit at the age of 15 you would have to take um yeah, <laughs> <You're young. laughs> yeah no. um you had to take driver's ed and that also included um instructor like driving hours um and so when I I remember when I signed up for driver's ed one of your first like my mom talked to them ahead of time and was like uh, she like has a disability and I didn't I didn't think I needed accommodations I didn't end up needing accommodation so I think it made a process a little bit easier but you know they were like will you are you fine with this can you take her and like quite honestly looking back at it now they like didn't have any experience with it but they were like yeah we'll figure it out which I think if I needed accommodations wouldn't have been the right fit um and then like I remember the first day of driver's ed they make you fill out this form of ultimately that's what gets like your pretty much application for your permit and there is a checkbox for having a disability and so I checked it because I'm 15 and I don't know what I'm doing and I did need doctor's notes but the funny thing is I I think what held up the process was I have a heart defect which is very irrelevant to driving and like it not even something that like could be an emergent issue and I needed like a cardiology note um so in Maine I I did have that issue to to be able to take my written tests and to be able to actually do my like supervised driving hours I had to have a medical note even though there weren't any accommodations necessary and then when I applied for my driver's test it was the same thing I had it in the I don't now I don't even know what they're called, but the person who like evaluates your driver's test um, was somebody who does it for any kind of disability or accommodations, even though I was not using one. So it was a little bit harder for me to get. I had to wait longer to get a like a scheduled date to take my test than like the uh, than many of my friends did because I had to have like a special like evaluator. Um, but it, it was very confusing and I still look back on that day and I'm like maybe I wasn't supposed to check that box <laughs> and maybe that was the whole issue but that no one really like tells you what to do <laughs> yeah and it hasn't changed <laughs> or at least I mean it's yeah I don't know. and then the woman is like bring this letter when he goes for his driver's test his license test I'm like okay six months whatever from now i'm gonna try to remember that <laughs> okay i don't know you know it's, you know she's like it's in the system it's in here but just in case i'm giving you a copy i'm like okay yeah that's that's def definitely something we we see i mean we educate the people down in springfield our capital about policies and and different things and it just really no one knows um it, it, it's crazy. It's it is. Yeah. Whoever wrote up the explanation for like what, you know, disabilities you would need like this note for sure. whoever wrote that was definitely sort of not in the like, right. medical therapeutic yeah. area because it was all just, it just said self-care. It was, it was bizarre. Wow. wow. Um, there, there is a website. Um, I, I, I want to, somehow get a resource kind of a, a, a thing, a handout going or, or something. Um, there is a, a website out there where you can find people like me um, certified in driver rehab based on uh, zip code. So, um, and I, I can kind of, kind of vet them a little bit and see if I know anybody, but if there's any other question, you know, kind of a little bit more area specific, you know, I can definitely reach out to, to our colleagues all over the, the country and try to get some questions answered. But it, it sounds like, unfortunately, you know, state funded agencies that, that don't know really what they're doing and they don't see this a lot, unfortunately. So, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll get some resources to, to those that need them. Yeah, I, no, I think that's great and helpful to know for when other families ask us at camp to know, I think that's great. Do we have any other questions or? 
Linda and Guy are ready to start driving with their kids, I'm sure, really soon. Can I, um, hi guys, I just wanted to ask a question. Our son Rio, he's 12 and a half. In the UK, if you receive the higher rate mobility disability living allowance, you can learn to drive at 16. So it's actually only less than three and a half years away that he would be able to start learning to drive. And I've always worried just from when he was young and he'd go to go-karting parties, how is this gonna work? Because his, um, his prosthetic is on his right side. So, um, you know, we, we have manual cars here as well as automatic. I don't know if you have manual in the US or if you just have, do you call it a stick? The automatic cars, I think, or you call the stick is the manual cars. I'm not sure, but yeah, we have we have them both, but the mostly automatic now. Yeah, I mean, I'm I drive both, but and I think automatic is much easier for everyone anyway. But um, so you know, he could drive an automatic, I guess. But I'm just concerned, thinking how can they swap um the pedal over sort of for his left? He's got a full left leg. Would he be able to? I'm sort of just wondering, would he be able to operate the pedals with his left leg on a normal car or wondering how it would be adapted? Because, you know, when I'm driving automatic, I've never really, obviously, I've never tried to use my left leg. I didn't know how it would work. Yeah, no, great question. Uh, and thank you. Um, so there, there are a couple of options. Um, our opinion, you know, kind of a department opinion is, um, and it's not right, right? It's just our opinion. We're not living with, with a prosthetic or anything like that. But if you're going to be driving long term with with that left foot mm. um, crossing over um, just position wise, mm. it can lead to some just kind of bad body mechanics. Oh, yeah. Because um, yeah. you're going to kind of twist this a little bit. Um, and again, not saying it's wrong, but just looking, you know, in, into the far, far future um, that that can it can lead to that. Um, unfortunately, as I kind of mentioned, learning it one way and then switching later is more difficult. It's not impossible by any means. We've had tons of tons of successful adults that whether you know it's trauma or, or something else where they, they lost that uh, function in their right right side, whether it be a stroke or anything like that, that have been successful learning to use that left foot. Um, but there are uh, options to put a left foot accelerator pedal. So the, the gas, the acceleration would be on the left side, the, the brake would be on the right. Um, and if that's all he knows, right, it's, it's not that hard to, to learn. Problem with that is that he's kind of limited to that vehicle, right? Yeah. Um, so, so driving other vehicles, it, it'll be difficult and it would be backwards. Um, that's not to say that someone else could not drive that vehicle. If it's mechanical, you can actually take that, that pedal out. And if you were to drive it, you wouldn't even know that it, it, was, it was adapted. Um, and then there's also the electronic. So they would mount a, a, a new left foot, left accelerator pedal to the wall, and it would just look like the one that's in there now, almost where the clutch is. Um, so you, you are, he probably would be limited to, to automatic cars, um, unless, you know, and I, I know I've, I've talked to people at camp that, um, that drive manual with, with, with the prosthetic. So it's not impossible, kind of just depends who you're talking to. Um, but with the electronic, you would, he would hit a button every time he's starting the car. And if he accidentally hits the, the original pedal on the right, it won't do anything. And, and the, the left one would work. If you were going to drive that car, you would start it, not hit that button. And then the, his pedal wouldn't do anything if you accidentally hit it. Um, so he definitely has options. I, I would, um, you know, try to try to, and I can, I can look up to see, um, you know, who's, who's available in your area to, to try to find uh, some resources for you. I mean, um, yeah, what you mean even in the UK or London? Sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean it's, it's, I know uh, it's years away, but it's just something that's on my mind. I sort of think sure. how is that gonna work for him? You know, yeah, but, he, he's got options. I would say, you know, manual uh, might be a little bit more, it will be more difficult, uh, yeah, but automatic, it's, it's very like common to, for, yeah. for us to, to deal with that on a, a pretty regular basis. No, that's really reassuring. Thanks, because I've just always sort of thought, I remember when he was young and he'd be invited to go-kart parties and I didn't want to take him if I felt that he wasn't going to be able to operate the pedals, you know, yeah. and I mean, he, he handled it well. No one said anything, but I always felt bad for him that sometimes he'd have to have like the instructor or the person running the party would have to sit on the go-kart with him to operate oh. the pedals 
or you sure. know we parents would have to he wouldn't be able to do that by himself and then sometimes there'd be issues about before he got his knee joint in his prosthetic and he couldn't bend his prosthetic and it was just a you know long straight leg was he going to be able to fit in the go-kart even so um you know it's always worried me how you know because it's on his right side how is that going to work so that's good to know that he will have the option you know for the sure. pedal and again there are campers with bilateral uh prosthetics lower lower limb prosthetics that rent cars and do, um yeah. with, with no adaptations at all so it's it, he, yeah. he should have options i'm not sure of the laws in the in the uk mm. but um he, he definitely has options 